It's the E-Commerce Minute, your daily dose of e-commerce, tech, and retail news with your hosts, Bart Moraz and John Suter. The E-Commerce Minute is a production of Sumo Heavy, a digital commerce consulting firm in Brooklyn, New York, and Philadelphia. Find us on the web at sumoheavy.com. It's E-Commerce Minute for February 27th, 2018. In today's episode, Nike Air Jordan sell out on Snapchat in 23 minutes. Last weekend was the 30th anniversary of the iconic Nike Air Jordan 3, and the celebration was in full swing over at the NBA All-Star Weekend in Los Angeles. Nike made history that weekend by becoming the first brand to sell a product directly through the Snapchat app, with a surprise special pre-release of its Air Jordan 3 Tinker Shoe, according to a post on TechCrunch. People who attended a Nike party after the NBA All-Star Game on February 18th could scan exclusive Snap codes to open the app and purchase the sneakers for same-day delivery. The shoes sold out in 23 minutes. E-commerce platform Shopify and startup Darkstore managed order taking and delivery for the sneaker promotion, and agency RGA developed the activation. Darkstore CEO Lee Hanicka said to TechCrunch, this is the holy grail of experience that Nike is trying to intend, which is direct to consumer, to the actual consumer versus a bot, and same day delivery. The snap code introduces a new paradigm for commerce. Aside from its recent brand merchandise release, this has been Snap's biggest foray into e-commerce. Earlier this month, Snap introduced a line of merch that includes dancing hot dog plushies, Snapchat logo sweatshirts, and branded hats. Letting brands sell their own merchandise through the platform might be the shot in the arm the struggling company needs. I don't know if it's struggling, but are you talking about Snapchat or, or Nike? Snap. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on what day you're talking uh, Yeah, I mean, listen, if you know, Instagram is starting to get the shopping thing finally, um, I mean, people have been waiting for it. Like, you still can't put URLs into Snapchat. This is like the worst thing ever. That's that's so painful. But yeah, it's painful, and I don't know what they're waiting for. Obviously, I mean, I've seen I, I've seen starting to see Instagram have like shopping stuff, but Snapchat, if they're doing what, it looks like they're doing it. Yeah, Plus, let's, I, I'd like to have a broader discussion about Instagram. But let's talk about Snapchat. Snapchat. Uh, the fact that they're integrating e-commerce in here and with the QR codes. It makes it so easy. Yep. Um, I'm surprised that this hadn't happened sooner. Um, and Which is what we were talking about for two years now, right? Yeah. But the way they did it with sneakers, that's the perfect audience for them. It's the perfect audience for uh, because there's a hype around it. Um, they got great PR out of this. It's, it's kind of a semi-viral thing, even though most people found out about it after it was over. Yep. I think this is, is a perfect promotion for Snapchat and... I think that this, they could do a lot more of this. This will really, I think it'll kind of change the, the platform because now we're going to get into the conversation of what is actually wrong with, with Snapchat. <laughs> uh, well, we were at, we were, we were at Temple. Uh, I was speaking at Temple and then we sat down with a whole bunch of kids and they're like, yeah, it's terrible. It's the worst. Uh, the kid, <laughs> yeah, we, we actually took an informal survey. We talked to a bunch of business students and we had a lunch with them afterwards and, we you started talking about social media and how it works with you, you, we're talking about entrepreneurs uh, entrepreneurism in general and and we were talking about the importance of social media and we took an informal survey and it was generally just thumbs down like Snapchat and they were all going to Instagram uh, but even then they said well but Instagram there's so many ads now so who knows how that's going to shake out but that's just that's just platforms right I mean at the end of the day who knows if this happened once and that'd be it or everybody gonna follow it right that's the biggest thing how many times have we seen something happen in one of these social media things and it worked and then not happen again right because it was just a, a novelty thing right uh, and they said that about Twitter you know that's the that, oh, nobody's gonna use Twitter so but <laughs> the thing with snapchat is they have such a user a large user base and the user base skews so much younger which we can get into a whole thing about that. Uh, 1.2 million Snapchat users signed a petition to tell, the, tell them to change the, the design back because the last design release, the stories were hidden and people are pissed off, but they're not going to change it back. I know that's, that's silly to even Yeah, consider. and like it, uh, Kyle Jenner just dropped off completely with one tweet, said, nope, no thank you. So, and- so for those who haven't heard, Kylie Jenner last week, um, I barely know who Kylie Jenner is, but Apparently, she's a social media influence. Yes, I know who she is. I just don't care about her. <laughs> uh, she tweeted, Sir, does anyone else not open Snapchat anymore? Or is it just me? To her 24 million followers. 
You uh, might care soon, about 24 million people too. Soon after, you, know, it's, you just don't casually say something to 24 million people. So <laughs> no. uh, as predicted, Snap stock plummeted 6%, a 1.3 billion with a B drop in market value. Uh, so you know, th- these social influencers do have a say in how these companies are run. They don't like to, you know, they're, these companies are, are almost run by the social influencers. You look at the people on, on, on Instagram with 10, 20 million followers, they could do one thing and, and mm-hmm. either make somebody a lot of money or ruin someone. It's, yeah. it's that powerful. Yeah. Um, and on Thursday, so on Thursday, makeup brand Maybelline posted something on Twitter and they asked their followers. Uh, um, they basically said, here's the tweet. Our Snapchat views have dropped dramatically and we want to stay connected to you all. I'm trying to do the voice of the social media manager at Maybelline. Our Snapchat viewers Views have dropped dramatically, and we want to stay connected with you all. We're not sure of this platform to do that anymore, unfortunately. Should Maybelline stay on Snapchat? Wow, John, that that is that is Isn't that good. No, Snapchat. No. You don't think, and you didn't think be a good guy like me. All right, so they <laughs> they thought better of it because it's kind of a stupid tweet for a brand to put out. Um, they deleted it, but while the poll was still live. I mean, they actually had a poll and enough people got on it by 6, 15 p.m. Thursday. 81% of the 5,000 people who voted chose to bail for and go to Instagram. So there is a backlash against Snapchat. Um, and the, the, where I'm leading this into is what does this mean for brands who want to get on? Because you can't put your money in every, on every platform. Do no, you-, you can't. You, I mean, it's right. I mean, you, you can, you can't, right? Like you can, and you should, um, but kind of follow, follow where attention is. I mean, that's, you know, I'm sorry to steal Gary's words, but like, where's the attention? Like if Snapchat is not the place right now, kind of follow it and do something else. And you're absolutely right. But how do you know where that is? You have to look, you have to skate where, where what's the Wayne Gretzky. You have to shoot where the puck is going. You have to go where the puck's going to be. You don't know where the puck's going to be. Do the work. Have you I'm sorry, work? but do the work. I, okay. This is just, it's point. Like, here's the thing. Like we do enough of this stuff all day long and, and we actually do our own marketing and push that out there. And there's a lot of content and we know we still don't do enough and we do a lot. You know what I mean? Like, right. I think the brands, and this is like a bigger, bigger like conversation about all these brands. I get it. It's part of marketing. You have to do it. You have to adjust to these things. It's not like used to be like, put an ad campaign out there and it's just out there. Right. Let's put an ad in. The, let's put an ad in the magazine and Sorry. see how it works. <laughs> Sorry. That's not the world anymore. It's micro, yeah. it's micro tiny things that just go out there and maybe You're five viewers right. view it, but on another platform, a thousand view it. Like mm-hmm. you have no choice. Well, we're the best case study of that. We put things on every social platform and we say how, how different pieces of our audience react. Some, some, it's just like nothing. It's but, but it. You have to put it out there because you have to, you have to figure out where your audience is going, and you have to figure out where your audience is going to be. Yeah, so, but also, but also, if you look at it, it, it depends on the story, right? We do this, this show every day, and sometimes the story hits on one thing and doesn't hit on another, and then vice versa. And that leads back to Instagram and Snapchat because Snapchat and Instagram are very visual. What we do is not very visual. So if you look at our Instagram feed, it's, it's, we don't post a lot there because how many times can you write about the consulting business or how many times can you, can you post a stat? It's, you know, people don't generally warm up to that kind of stuff. So we, we're very careful about what we post on Instagram, but Twitter, Twitter is, uh, we're very into sharing e-commerce news and information. Uh, and, uh, and obviously what we post out for these, podcasts and other events that we do. So it's, it's definitely, you have to tell your content to the platform. So let me ask you, have you heard over the weekend of a platform called Vero? It's on my phone. So where did this come from? Like in the last three days, all my design groups blew up with, Oh my God, are you on Vero? Should we be there? And I went, I don't know. I'm going to sign up anyway, because who knows? It's, it's yeah. like the same thing with Ello. Remember when Ello came out? Yeah, but that's, the, but, I mean, the same thing with Instagram, same thing with Facebook, same thing well, with all these things. Right? That, that's precisely my point is where I was getting is how do you know what's the right platform to be in? And you have to, you have to just get on there and give some attention to it just to see. Well, it's Snapchat. I remember Snapchat was nothing and then like exploded all of a sudden. Right. And I still don't know how to use it and they keep changing. And I still don't know how to use it. Snapchat is very frustrating from a user user experience 
standpoint, but that's a whole other John, discussion. It might be just you. It could be just me. No, I don't think it's just me. I think it's a terrible, terribly designed. I think they, they tried to be too cute for their own good. And I think they're, I think, I think a lot more people would have used Snapchat in the early days if it was easier to use. That's just my opinion. That's probably true. Who knows? We'll see. All right. Anything else to add to this? Um, no. That's about it, my friend. All right. Uh, let's see. <laughs> I faded out there. <laughs> we I'm, just I'm, faded. I'm, I'm going to cut all this out. <laughs> Bye, end the show. All right, that's your e-commerce minute for today. We'll see you on the internet tomorrow. That's it for today's show. If you like the show, do us a favor and subscribe or leave us a review on iTunes. And don't forget, you can now listen to the e-commerce minute on your Amazon device. Just add e-commerce minute to your flash briefing. And finally, if you have a comment or suggestion or just want to say hi, find us on social media at Sumo Heavy. <laughs>